Uh, can I please invite Vivek Bald, Alauddin Ullah, Susanna Ludwig, and Beza Boya Kiolu. I hope I got that right. Vivek tutored me before I came on stage. Uh, can we please have a big round of applause? Thank you so much. And my grandmom's from Noakali, so we are cousins now. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to first thank you for presenting us with this film so many years in the making. And I'll ask one question, and then I'll open it up to the audience. Vivek, your book, as much as authorship can be single, you were the author of your book. And this film, you have credited your editor, Anna Laudin, and you as the writers of the film. So for each one of you, if you could talk a little bit about what that process of collaboration and authorship over something as huge and vast as this um, looks like. So um, we'll try to make this quick because we really want to give the audience the love it deserves. Um, uh, Vivek was a DJ, I was a comedian, and DJ Reka, who's somewhere here, I believe, DJ Reka, DJ Reka orchestrated all of this because I was doing a show with Reka and she was like, you know, just hand out your flyers back in the day when you had to hand out flyers for shows. So I was at Den of Thieves and Vivek was spinning some, oh, it was incredible what he was spinning. So I was like, this white boy can spin, right? <laughs> so he introduced himself as Vivek, he was DJ Saraiki. And so the film that, that he was showing I thought was beautiful. And, um, you know, so we also had, you know, mutual love for music. You know, we love the same type of stuff, The Clash, all the rebellious stuff, The Clash, Public Enemy. So we had a, an affinity for the music that was defiant. And when I saw his, um, his film, let's be honest, there's a lot of South Asian filmmakers that pander, and Vivek didn't pander. So I knew the way he tackled music and race and mutiny in England, the way that was approached, I wanted to collaborate with someone because I had a vision of this film that I wanted music and I wanted it to have sort of a visual poetry and I felt that Vivek would be the perfect collaborator. And that's how we started and when Vivek said yes, I was so happy. But then the next sentence was like, we don't have any money. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, it was, it was many years that we didn't have funding. Um, and we literally, we used to meet at the old uh, like Starbucks, <laughs> just a few blocks away from here, and didn't order anything, just sat there and have our production <laughs> meetings, you know. Um, and uh, then over time, you know, there was a period where um, we'd started early in, in the early 2000s, and then, um, you know, I took this course into, into academia, into getting, you know, I got a PhD specifically to do the research to make the film. <laughs> Um, so we were like Abbott and Costello investigating this. <laughs> like, um, like what? And, um, and and you know, thankfully, by the time that was finished, a few years later, um, we started to get funding initially from the Center for Asian American Media, um, and then from the Ford Foundation, uh, the Whiting Foundation, and um, and then we really, you know, started to work, um, kind of started to roll. And also at that point, Susanna was encouraging us to go beyond um, talking head interviews. And so we started doing things like, you know, creating situations and just filming, like the, the dinner or, you know, bringing photographs to the table. Photographs became very, very important. Um, and then by the time we were done filming or thought we were done filming and Beza came onto the project, um, she, you know, took this immense amount of footage um, and not only started to carve a, a, a really deeply affecting story out of it, but also then was suggesting, well, you know, we're missing something here, we're missing something there. We went and shot the, the scene in the archives at her suggestion, at um, the, the um, New York and Poets Cafe, etc. So, you know, Beza really brought her full self beyond um, you know, beyond the edit, you know, to, to that part of the process. Right. Uh, there's one thing I also want to say, too, that, you know, in this festival, we should give a shout out, not just to Beza, but all the female filmmakers and the editors, because they bring a whole flavor, a whole sensibility, and 
as you know this in the film this you know the joke is i went on this project to disc to find my father and i discovered my mom so in the second half i think beza did a beautiful job of like taking over and really helping us and making this where we didn't we wanted to make it about resilience and about what you know our parents went through so that was something really sensitive that we really wanted to break to to, to show in the film and i feel that beza did a masterful job in editing that uh, I, I also would like to say um, I think getting a writer credit for documentary editors is really important, especially um, alliance of doc editors, uh, which I'm a part of, is really promoting this credit uh, nowadays um, because a lot of people don't really know what documentary editors do. Um, uh, it's compared to fiction film editing, but I think it's a totally different work because I was giving this, you know, material hours of maybe hun uh, 100 hours of footage and different types of material, and uh, Alaudin and Vivek were both really uh, busy at the time, so I was just by myself and, you know, cutting scenes and uh, finding out what, you know, how these scenes could work together, and so it's really a writing process, uh, and a lot of people think uh, documentary editors just stitch scripts together, which it's it's not. It's like finding a story in hours and hours of footage. So I, I think uh, having this writer's credit is really important, and I really appreciate Vivek and Aladdin and Susanna for, you know, understanding that, and um, yeah. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just uh, also add that um, well, first of all, I think that one of our cinematographers, Shamsul Islam, is also in the audience. Happy birthday, Shamsul. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, and our colorist, Zach Halberd, and, and assistant colorist, Eric Salim Jenkins. Um, and but also, I was uh, Hiram Maristani, who, who recently passed away, the beautiful still pictures mm -hmm. that you see of East Harlem. He's like East Harlem's like photography like legend. His daughter is here somewhere, Alita. So we wanted to show the love yeah. of Hiram and, and bringing uh, East Harlem like to the forefront with those visual images. Um, and then I'll just also say that you know this was also a collaboration with all the music. And we were very, very fortunate early on um, to um, have a promise from Vijay Iyer that he would work with us on this. And he said, we have no money, Vijay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and years later, when we were actually getting ready to, when we were starting to edit, um, you know, we returned to Vijay, and he was incredibly generous. And you can see that his, his music and the various different, um, you know, groups that he's collaborated with over the time became really crucial and then in addition um you know he brought together the same the same time that aludin was in uh bangladesh um he brought together um at at banff um zakir hussein um ganavia uh um i'm forgetting imani imani zuri um and um and it, you know they um, you know, I just sent some footage and, and created some reels that gave a sense for, for the feel of both Harlem and Bangladesh and, and some of the storylines that were going on. And they spent a day at Banff just recording, you know, based on the connections between themselves, but also connection to the, to the um, film. Um, and that's what you know, some of the most powerful music throughout the, the piece comes from that interaction and that collaboration. Um, I uh, was lucky enough to produce Vivek's last film, and so I knew what a talented filmmaker he was. And when he first told me about this story um, at the very beginning of his collaboration with Aladdin, I was so blown away by the potential that I thought was there for healing for Aladdin, for the community, and I felt like the story was really, really important to be told. Um, and I still feel that way. I feel so proud to be in this room with all of you and to have gotten to help bring this film to light. So thank you so much for having us, Doc NYC. Thank you. Thank you, Nadia. We're really happy that you're here. Um, the fact that you all are here and that you sold out this screening 
at Doc NYC means a whole lot in the same in the vein that that Nadia was just talking about to to ensure that that the industry at large to you know whoever is here understands that there are audiences for these stories that are not being told in the larger picture of the South Asian diaspora. Um, so we thank you for that. And, um, and please, there are 70 tickets left for Thursday. So every one of you, if you tell one person, will more than sell it out. Thanks. Yeah, and I just also wanted to say that the closest thing that we have to a story on South Asian and, you know, South Asian solidarity with the black community was made in 1989, Mississippi Masala. So, and I, I would always be so ashamed that there is nothing else between now and then to show for the solidarities we've been building through history. So thank you for making this. And like Nadia said, this is ours now. This is ours um, to keep, to show around. So thank you. Um, I did see a hand go up there, yep. So that's a question for those of you who may not have heard it. It's a question on the editorial process and how did Beza get mixed up with these guys? Um, Ken is our um, one of our consulting editors, by the way, and thank you for you know all your help as well. Um, so Vivek and I know each other from um, MIT's Open Documentary Lab, where I was a fellow and um, he's, he's a part of MIT's Comparative Media Studies program where I was a grad student, so that's how we met. And then years later when they got funding, they brought me back into the project. That's how I got involved with the uh, project, which I've always really appreciated and loved. Um, uh, so I, well, I should ask you, how long did it take us to? <laughs> Cause it, was it was off on and on for two years, two, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was a very long process, I think, both uh, because um, it took 20 years to, you know, film, and uh, they used so many different types of media, and I think the intention was more like interview-based <coughs> film at the beginning, and then it became more verite, and then more archival, so I think that the challenge was to, you know, make it a consistent, cinematic, beautiful film in the end, so it took a lot of work uh, and reworking the edit and never giving up. <laughs> and, and I think a lot of, um, when we did screenings, many times we were um, advised to, you know, cut this scene, cut Mohima's story, cut, I don't know, the chachas, or, or not include the history. But in the end, we included all of those threads. And I think that's what made this film so beautiful because uh, it's such a multi-layered story and, yeah, the, the process was very long, but very challenging, but very exciting. And I really enjoyed working with like these talented filmmakers. And I really appreciated that it was a true collaboration between editor and directors. And I think that's the best way to work, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, because it's like when, you know, two minds, three minds come together, it becomes, the result becomes something bigger than each one of those people envisioned in the beginning. So, yeah, it was a really a joy working with this team. I think that's it. Can we, maybe we just take our questions out to the lobby, but don't forget there is a screening on Thursday at 9.30 p.m. Please go home, tell your friends, don't forget to vote, and I'll see you back for more films that we have. Thank you.